this presentation, we'll look at the probabilities obtained by rolling dice. So our first example is, is if a single die is rolled. If that's the case, the only possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. They're all equally likely. So the probability of getting 1 is 1 sixth. Probability of getting 2 is 1 sixth. Probability of getting 3 is 1 sixth, etc. Since all the probabilities are equal, 6 equal chances, all probabilities are 1 sixth. But if we have two dice are rolled, it's a more complex sample space. So we have to think of it this way. If the first die is 1 and the second die is 1, the result is 1, 1. If the first die is 1 and the second die is 2, the result is 1, 2. If the first die is 1 and the second die is 3, the result is 1, 3. Now, we can go for all of our cases where the first die is 1, there'd be six possibilities. If the first die is 2, there are six possibilities. If the first die is 3, there are six possibilities. So you can see that we have several possibilities in our sample space. And here is the sample space, starting at 1, 1. First die is 1, second die is 1. First die is 1, second die is 2. First die is 1, second die is 3. First die is 1, second die is 4. First die is 1, second die is 5. First die is 1, second die is 6. All the way through, first die is 6, second die is 6. So there are 36 elements in the sample space, and these are all equally likely. But if you add them together, 1 plus 1 is 2, 6 plus 6 is 12. 2 happens 1 time out of 36. 12 happens 1 time out of 36. But 7, 1 plus 6 is 7, 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 3 is 7, 5 plus 2 is 7, 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 occurs 6 times out of 36. So clearly the sums are not all equally likely. That's why we have to write it in the current form. So if you look at the sums, you'll notice they all lie along the same diagonal. First die is 1, second die is 1, result is 2. 3's are here, 4's are here. 5's are here, 6's are here, 7's are here along diagonals, as you can tell. So we can determine probabilities by counting the number of values that sit on the diagonal. So there's our numbers. How often does 2 show up? 1 time out of 36. How often does 3 show up? 2 times out of 36. How often does 4 show up? 3 times out of 36. How often does 5 show up? 4 times in 36, etc. So if you list all those probabilities, you can see the highest probability is our sum of 7, which turns out to be 6 out of 36. Smallest, once again, sum of 2 is 1 out of 36. Sum of 12 is 1 out of 36, with everything in between. Now we'll look at actually simulating the rolling of two dice. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take 100,000 numbers, put them in C1, C2, semicolon for a subcommand, integer 1 through 6. So that's going to put numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 into columns 1 and 2. So it's going to behave like rolling a die. And here are my first results. So you can see we had 3 in the first column, we had a 1 in the second column. When we add those together, we're going to get 4. 3 in the first column, 6 in the second column. When we add those together, we're going to get 4. So what's the command we need to use to add those together? It's the let command. So we're going to say let C3 equals C1 plus C2. And you can see C3, 4 is 3 plus 1, 9 is 3 plus 6, 8 is 2 plus 6, etc. But we have 100,000 numbers, and we need to figure out how many 2s do we have, how many 3s do we have, how many 4s do we have. The command for that will be table. So if I say table C3, it will go ahead and tabulate all the results of the numbers in column 3. So there you can see our tabular results. So the number 2 showed up 2,770 times. Number 3 showed up 5,580 times. And we can use these relative frequencies to approximate our probabilities. So from those relative frequencies, we get these approximate probabilities. Again, notice I have the approximation sign. The law of large numbers tells us that as the number of trials increases to infinity, the relative frequency should get closer and closer to the theoretical probability. But we can see with 100,000 trials, we're fairly close. 0277 was my theoretical probability. Excuse me, was my simulated probability. 0278 was my theoretical probability. 
0.0558 simulated probability, 0.556 theoretical probability. So again, you can see we have some similarities between these two perspectives using 100,000 trials to simulate the probabilities or listing the sample space with 36 elements to find the theoretical probability. If I want to roll three dice, how do we do that? So again, I'm going to go with 100,000 as my number, random 100,000. We're going to put the numbers in C1 through C3, semicolon to get a subcommand, integer 1 through 6 period to go ahead and put numbers 1 through 6 in columns C1 through C3. Then our goal is to add those together. We want to see what the sum is of those three numbers. So we're going to say let C4 equal C1 plus C2 plus C3. And then we're going to tabulate the results by saying table C4 to see how often we have various numbers. So here's the numbers that we're looking at. And I'm interested in five. So how often did we get five on the roll of three dice? 2,857 out of 100,000. So that's our probability there. And for 15, 4,659, also out of 100,000. And there's our probability for sum of 15, approximate probability. Now, can we find that theoretically? So can we find the theoretical solution for the sum of uh, three dice giving me five? Or can we find the theoretical probability for getting a sum of 15? To list all the elements in the sample space, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, there's a whole bunch of those. We had 36 in our uh, earlier sample space, and we need six times that many, or 216 elements in this sample space is what we're looking for. And we're focusing on the number five. So can you think of some triples that are going to have a sum of five? Well, 113, 122, 131, 212, 221, 311. Notice they have these written in increasing order. 1-1 one, one followed by 3, 1-2 one, followed by 2, 1-3 one, followed by 1, etc. So I have six total winners divided by 216 possibilities for 0278 as my theoretical solution. My relative frequency from the simulation was 02857, and you can see those are relatively close. Now to do 15, we do the same sort of thing. We try to list all of the elements in the sample space that give us a sum of 15. So you can see we found 10 elements in our sample space that add up to 15. So therefore, our probability for a sum of 15 is approximately 10 out of 216, or no, that's actually exactly 10 out of 216, 0.0463. This is our theoretical probability. Our simulated situation gave us an approximate answer of 04659. Our relative frequency of success, 04659. Our theoretical probability, 0.0463, fairly close. Let's take a look at how we would uh, roll five dice. If my goal is to find the approximate probability of getting a sum of 17, I need to design a simulation that will enable me to roll five dice. And here I'm going to use 1 million. So I'm saying random 1 million C1 through C5. Putting a million numbers in columns 1 through column 5. Make them all integer 1 through 6. And then we're going to go ahead and add up all those numbers. So I've got let C6 equal C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 plus C5. And then we can see all of the results that we have. Now we are interested in the sum of 17. So how often did we get a sum of 17? We have 100,284 out of 1 million. That will give us our uh, relative frequency of success. 100,284 out of 1 million, and that's, that's a typo there. Let's correct that if we can. Out of 1 million, and we get uh, 0.100284 is the approximate probability for the sum of 17. Getting the exact number there would certainly be very challenging.